So throughout this, congratulations, you've now been introduced to the four main types of R. Uh, you will use these throughout the rest of time, and you'll get a lot better at them. It's going to be a little hairy at first, because it's just always a little hairy at first, but continue to go through notes, go through the lab, you'll, you'll get more and more used to it the more you use it. Now, more complex data types. Sometimes you run into things that don't fit into these four little boxes, right? DNA is one of them, because it can be a little bit more complex. You don't want to sit there and type in quotation marks around everything. You don't want to have to load it in specially. In order to use those, oftentimes it's a common data type or a um, file type that you may run across. Uh, we run across a lot of BCF files or BAM files, which are genetic variation or mapping files. There is a package to handle that. Someone has built all of these little pieces together into something that is more easily functional. So for instance, there is a sequence in R package that handles sequence data. And you guys will use that in the lab. Um, there's packages for handling graphing. There's packages for handling jam files. It's using these same data types and sticking them together and building more complicated data types for you to use that you don't have to reinvent every time. It's very, very, very convenient. So I'm going to show you how to load new packages. This is my favorite part of our studio because there is a packages tab and you can see all of the stuff that we preloaded for you. You may not see this little section here because it's stuff I loaded afterwards. And if it has a checkbox, it's been loaded. So in this case, uh, APE, which is analysis phylogenesis, is preloaded. You can unload it that way. You can load it that way. If it's pre-installed, that's all you have to do. And then you can start using the aspects of that library. If you want to install a library and add functionality, you click install, and you can type the name. So in this case, let's do gplot2. Two. Two. And you'll see this list here. Uh, CRAM is the major Wild West repository of R. It's where everybody, it's like the GitHub of R, even though GitHub is becoming more popular of R. This is where people are loading most of their packages. So if you're looking for something, you can look for it in here. Um, it'll actually give you a list when you're typing it. You can give it more than one and it will handle it. It does all that nice legwork for you. But after you add that, click install dependencies. Save yourself from having to install all the dependencies. A lot of these packages are built on other packages, which are built on other packages, which are built on even more packages. It will handle all of that for you if you click that button. And you can click install, and it will usually give this to you, and it is saying, you don't have root on this machine. You don't have the ability to install it in a main place, so instead, we're going to make you a personal little library of all your own stuff. Click yes. And it's already loaded on mine, but you'll start to see things here. Now, this can be a little disconcerting for people because it's going to vomit a whole lot of red text at you. It's not an error, I promise. Uh, it'll just keep going. When you see something that says done, it's complete. If there is an error, which oftentimes there is, you can copy that error in Google directly. Google is your friend here. Uh, because those errors are very, very common. And sometimes there's a missing package on your computer, or you need to change a setting, or you need to do something like that. If you ever have that problem and you don't know what to do, or you don't understand what Google is telling you, feel free to email us. We do this a lot, um, so we can, we can help you walk through that. But this is the easiest way to load stuff. Now, at the top of this, you'll notice R was also nice enough to give you the actual command. If you were to ever want to install it yourself without going through the point click interface, say you're on a command line, that's your syntax. It's install.packages and then the name of the package. One caveat, it's expecting one input. What if you want to install two packages? What do you have to do? But if you give it a comma, it thinks that that's two pieces of information. C thing. So if you want to install two programs, you have to do that. 
and make sure your both parentheses are closed. That is another common way. What? What about if you spell them separately? You just give them each individually. So, if you want to install them separately, you would just do. That and then you do your next package. But is there any uh, advantage to have like, the same C function? Oh, if you just don't want to have to do it. Like, I've installed all of these packages, uh, all of this here. I'm not installing that by hand. There's no way. So, when I provisioned this machine, I made a list of libraries that I thought people would need. We're going to see, let it install, walked away, got lunch, came back, they were done. So it allows you to do it at scale if you need to do stuff quickly. And oftentimes when you get into really complicated stuff, like recently I've been working in Bioacoustics, there's a lot of packages that you need to install, and the, the help templates give you those packages. Install Warbler and Raven and uh, Seaview and all of these other ones, and I don't want to do that individually, so I just apply them and install them. Make sense? And then once you've installed them, you can either click the button, And this actually gives you the syntax. Anytime you want to load a library, you can just say library, parentheses, and the name. This section right here is very important. This is where it's putting your private repository, your private installations. So if you install things that are system-wide, it'll go to a location. It's popping up windows, uh, saying that this location is actually installed here, not in the default, which is way out of the root which you need administrative uh, privileges to install. But none of that matters if you're on this, because you can just click it. But if it's listed under this user library, you'll probably see this live loc. But if you click down here to say a bind, oh, it does give it to, to you by default. This is where its default installation is. But you don't have access to that, because that's a good way to break your flow damage by getting 100 people access to the administrator friends. So, you guys get your own individual flag. Make a little sense? There are two major repositories. Um, one is CRAN. It is the Wild West. It is anybody's code. You can write code and put it up there. There's really not a whole lot of curation. Um, the, there are domain-specific repositories. Bioconductor is a really, really popular one in genomics. And Bioconductor requires that there be help vignettes, so it shows you demonstrations of how that stuff works. It requires that that is interoperable with other Bioconductor packages, and that it also uh, requires that it is a contribution to the better analysis of genomic data. What's nice about Bioconductor, there's a link in the notes, it's very tightly clustered. Everything works together. And what's beautiful about this is when technology changes, like we go from Sanger sequencing to next generation sequencing, or next generation sequencing to third generation sequencing, basically our input changes, only one function changes and all of the other ones are still able to be used because it has a standard. This is very, very, very heavily curated and therefore a lot nicer to use. Things are a little bit more consistent, a lot more friendly. If you are in a field that is not genomics and you happen to know of a repo that is for your domain, please share that information with me. I don't know them because I don't tend to work in those uh, outside of genomics a lot or I just use one or two packages. But if you know of a, a good repo for your domain, let me know and I will add it to the notes for the future of other people. Um, this is really helpful. I don't know of the one for ecology. There's got to be one. Um, I'm looking for one for bioacoustics. I don't know one. But I'm, these are really large libraries and they tend to exist for different groups. So as I find them, I will share them. 